After you guys had a few questions recently about a couple of my beautiful vintage British down arm chainsaws and several people have asked about the guide bars because they they look well some of them look absolutely stunning and beautiful when they're when they're dressed and they're they're done up. And you know where did I get them from? And you know the, the reality is I, I dress them myself or clean them up and so one person said it'd be really interesting to see how you do that. I thought okay maybe if that's interesting for one maybe a few of you might be really interested and some of you may already have a, your own technique which you use and so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you a walk around of a few of the tools I use and my personal approach and how I get the best finish on the best finish on some of the really old guide bars while sympathetically restoring them without hopefully doing too much damage or material removal. So I'll pick the camera up. Let me show you the tools I use and it might be of real interest to to some of you. So one of my first essential bits of kit, and I love this, is my blacksmith's leg vise. If you haven't you've ever seen any of these in person, they are absolute monsters. Um, it stands about one meter tall, and normally the the leg would be set into concrete, but I came up with the idea of using an auger bit and then getting the the foot of the vise into a tree stump and then you know a length of the trunk and then putting in some heavy duty wood bolts in and I, it's so it's semi portable I can move it around but it has no chance of falling over I think the vice itself weighs in the region of 130 to 140 pounds so I use the leg vice essential I'll come back to the two saws in a second and then I have a couple of essential things which when I'm dressing the guide bar. A caliper, really, really useful. Can be done without it, but it's really useful to have the caliper. A couple of tools, a couple of clamps. I'll show what they're for a little later. Essential as well, if you're using petrochemical products, particularly if you're using old oils and you're cleaning things up, don't take any chances dermatologically with your, or dermatologically with your hands and your skin. Just always wear gloves. And this is my perpendicular, what's well, a just a, circular facing wheel which I've got different types of grinding papers I've converted it to a velcro pad and I've got a, a bar and it's me ultra angles and that's for dressing the guide rails so also a pick a permanent marking pen and a twisted knot and a twisted knot grinder for for rapid material removal off the face of the guide bars as well. Okay, so it's a beautiful profile. This is an original Dan Arm DD8F, so 1950s saw in terrible condition. Spark plug is um, damaged in the threads and it's somebody's cross threaded it in the head. Has a crank crack, everything's perished, it's completely seized solid but she does have a few really beautiful things which can be saved, which is it has an intact tensioner, which I require and they're great. I hope the clutch and the drum is salvageable because it's, this is running a 7 sixteenths pitch chain setup. So it'll have the corresponding sprocket wheel. That's really, really important. I have a use for the exhaust and the tank and for the oil tank assembly as well. And my hope is to go from, from this finish on the guide bar to this is one I've just finished. This is an original DDA 110 guide bar. It's been fully dressed, so I hope to get it looking something like this with its original patina finish and just sympathetically dressed and looking good that's the hope um 
and I've got this engine here just because it's uh, again it's interesting looking at these two engines they almost look identical and another friend of mine was asking the difference between one of the DD8Fs and they're very difficult to tell and so you can tell on the engine plate here if it's visible this is a DD8 air forward slash 2 and the serious and terrible um, condition this particular engine but again it has a couple of really nice parts which I'm going to remove and the serial number plate on the Mark II was riveted on the aluminium shroud at the top and if you look at the engine number on this the saws look identical this is a 8F forward slash 1 only tiny subtle differences but doesn't have the same positioning for the plate so this is the Mark 1 version so they started life in 57 okay so let's get the camera back on the stand and hopefully the process of getting it from this terrible state into something like this beautiful finished Oregon bar might be useful for some of you. I have oh, let me put it back on its stand. Hi guys. Okay, so I have I don't have the editing skills um, to fast forward it and to kind of put the Benny Hill music on it to show people running around and and speeding up. So what I'll do is I'll start the processes off and then I'll pause the video and then when I finished it I'll I'll come back and I'll show you the beginning of how I started it and then hopefully the, the last bits towards the end. So always then keep the petrochemicals off your hands if you're working with the old stuff you do not want the body absorbing any of it. It's really, really nasty stuff and good eye protection and hopefully a, a, an amazing result at the end. Okay. So I am going to, if any of you, um, just to recap on the blacksmith's leg devices, they are, they're so spectacular. You can leave them outside when they're bolted and just put a, a you know, a, a nice protective sheet over them but they they weather just beautifully they literally hold anything and they're so heavy they're they're almost impossible to move um, great for wood or working on the saws if you're tuning an engine they're just a, a beautiful find and um, I say to anybody if you had one or if you haven't seen them have a look at one and get one in your garden and perhaps if you have no permanent place to concrete it in you could always get hold of a Something similar to this arrangement I find works really, really well. So, we'll get some gloves on. I don't know when this glide ball is last, last removed, but I get the impression it was a very, very long time ago. So I have a few other bits which I tend to keep to hand as well for removing things, which is a, a really good quality brake cleaner, little agitation brush. And hopefully, it'll let me get to the heads of the bolts. Okay, guys, let me just see how in shot we are. Maybe I can get it a bit closer, because it's a long way out. So this will be very interesting when this finally finally comes off and I always find this a really good idea as well when you're working with these to, to put a bit of chain oil just to give it a chance to soak in a little bit. Right. OK, 
Okay, let's get the guy bar off. Okay, not too bad. And again, not too bad. Excellent. They're really awkwardly positioned on the DD8F. The the front handle just just fouls the the nice fitting of the of the socket. So, but these are going to be replaced as they are so badly worn. Right guys, I am going to... Okay, that's loosened off nicely. I'll pause the video and I'll get the guide bar off and I'll come back. Hey guys, okay, after a little bit of jiggery pokery, the chain has decided to come loose and so that's the beauty of having this mounted into a great vice is that it gives me a chance now to gently ease the engine off which is oh, very very firm lets me have a chance to maneuver the chain while not having to worry about the weight of that engine and that's a real plus because as you'll see, this thing is uh, <laughs> its going to keep its shape for a little while, but that'll be interesting as well. Although that this chain doesn't have a huge amount of tooth life left, um, maybe, one or, maybe one or two sharpens in it, but when we dress it, it will look like a thing of beauty. So place that there. Okay, and she's free. So, engine off. Let's place the engine there. Place our vice grip, place our chain over there. So here she is then. They're a gorgeous profile, absolutely beautiful. And so you think if this is around 57, 60, so it makes it, uh, what, 60, 63 years old. So you can see where she's been clamped that the oil in the sawdust at the at the motor end has been her friend and then the hardened stellite tip has got excellent symmetry and the rest well it looks heavily pitted the drive rails themselves are well we'll come on to that they've got a little bit of deviation in it's a slight bend in the bar and again all those things we'll get to now Right, I'll pause. I'm going to move this over to the next to the next job I do. Hi guys. Right, so this next part's probably going to be completely self-explanatory, but so I found it works really, really well. You have to get the bars onto a very stable surface, so. I love working on some of the old old discs I have. And then I'm going to clamp the guide bar. So I don't want it moving while I'm finishing the surface or taking the surface off it. These twisted knot grinders really are very, very aggressive, but very effective. Okay. Always, if you're using this, you have to have, good to have two layers on because these things come off like nails and also really substantial face protection.
Right guys, I'm gonna show you what that does to the surface. And then I'll pause and then carry on with the rest of it. So it gives you this beautiful burnished type finish. And so the difference between using a, a sandpaper on these guide bars and using a, a twisted knot wire brush, so it can be any type, but the twisted knot means that there's multiple strands of the steel wire twisted together and they're incredibly aggressive but unlike the sandpaper it won't remove the really good quality steel underneath. And so what we'll do is we'll actually get back to the metal surface and we'll kind of burnish it and we can see really the true state and condition of how our guide bar is. Okay, so I'll go over it. It's going to take me 10 minutes or so. And I'll be back and I'll show you how that looks and then we'll get on to the next stage. Back in a minute. Hi guys, okay. <laughs> Sound a bit out of breath, I've been putting an awful lot of pressure on the grinder um, with this twisted knot wire wheel to get back to this finish. And she's starting to look absolutely beautiful. So this is the first side, but I wanted to show people and there's another great reason for just starting with wire wheels rather than sandpaper. And that is that you can start to tell the history of how this saw has been used. You will see where the edges are starting to peen over and round over this side, and then not this side. So almost invariably, this is the bottom edge and it's been predominantly run this side and the blade has predominantly not been, not been turned. And we can confirm that with bar symmetry later on at the tip. And we can also tell if the saw has been angled on one dominant side rather than the other. So we'll get onto that. I'll spin it around and I'll show people then what the Let's do it now and have a look as a little comparison. So this is where we currently are and this is what we're coming from. You can see that polished tip, it's got pretty good tip symmetry in fact. It has got pretty good tip symmetry. What will be interesting is when we start to do a depth uh, measurement to see how uniform it's been wearing down its length. Some bars, like you can just see here, there's a tiny shaping here where the edge is just scalloping in very slightly. And so what would be really important is that we have enough clearance for the drive rail drive links when they sit in down inside and that they're not actually bottoming out because that generates obviously huge heat and huge wear. Right, I'll pause and I'll get on with the other side. Back shortly. Hi guys, so I'm halfway through or three quarters of the way through this side of the bar, but I wanted to show you as well um, just how much heat is generated taking off, off this surface rust. And you have to be ever so careful, these bars maintain a huge amount of heat when you're cleaning them up. And it's very easy to burn yourself and very easy to burn yourself and get dreadful little metal splinters. So always, always good pair of workshop neoprene or nitrile gloves or leather mitts or whatever you have um, but what's incredible is how hot this stuff gets when you're cleaning I don't know if that was visible just then, but the ends of the twisted knot brush glow red hot 
that's how hot it gets. Okay guys, I'm going to pause again and I'll finish this last little bit off. Hi guys. Okay, so I have a few finger marks on her from moving her around with the gloves because she's so hot. So this is how she has started to come back. She's got a beautiful now burnished steel finish on her. Both sides. And you can just see now these sharp burrs on the bar at the bottom. And the, the drive rails themselves, a little bit of thinning on one side. And we'll talk about that on the next process as well. Spin her round. Pretty good symmetry this side. Okay. This is when we now move on to our facing grinder or sander. I've got several different types of carbide wheels which I have for this. And I'll come back shortly once I've taken this phone call.